for today, we're going to use tennis balls to help release the body. So sometimes, no matter how much stretching you do, you really just need to get into the muscles and the soft tissues, the fascia, to help release and ease the body. And it's still in the realm of yoga. Yoga is this big umbrella word that can mean many different things. Um, but it's a healing. It's a healing for the body. And we do it in a sense that we're doing it very mindfully. So we don't just do it and move and just carry on. We're going to release some of the body and then we're going to stop, be mindful of the effect of the whole body. So it becomes very holistic. It's very much about the body and the mind rather than just about the physical body. Um, I love this practice, particularly kind of midweek here on retreats when we're feeling a little stiff and we can start to really feel those muscles need a bit of TLC a little more deeply um, than before. So I hope you enjoy the practice and when we're working it can feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it can feel um, tender and that's what we want. We want to run towards, we want to lean towards the tender bits, the, the uncomfortable bits. That's where the work is going to happen. But you don't want it to be excruciating pain. Again, I always say yoga isn't torture. If it feels torturous, then something isn't right. So if you feel like you're on 10 out of 10 on your pain threshold, then see how you can soften it and maybe come off, come back away from that. And maybe put a blanket then over the tennis balls because this is going to give you, um, it's a small surface area, so it's going to give you um, strong pressure. If you have something like a foam roller, it's a little bit wider, so it kind of, the wider the surface, the less pressure you put. And the same, if you need to pad that out with a blanket, it's going to be a wider surface area, so it's not going to feel so intense. And if you want more intensity in the practice, I'll show you how to do that as well. So we're going to start just lying flat on your back. We don't need the tennis balls, but do have them easy to reach as you lie on your back. And I'd like you, if you can, to keep your legs straight. This is just so that we can really feel our body. So even if it doesn't feel really comfortable and you prefer the knees bent, just for this exercise, keep your legs straight down your mat. And have your arms resting down by the sides of your body as well, turning the palms of your hands up to the sky. And just like we begin all of our practices, take a moment or two to really arrive into your practice. To arrive into the here, the now. So there's this transition from whatever it was you were doing before this moment into this moment. Start to become aware of your breath. The rise and flow of the breath rise and fall of the breath. And if you're noticing the breath is shallow, if it's moving quite quickly, consciously slowing it down. Inviting a low and slow breath to low into your belly. And slow in its rhythm. And allow the exhalation to invite a sense of softening into your body. Every time you breathe out, a reminder to let go a little bit more. Maybe even an audible sigh to help facilitate that further. Feeling the whole body, the nervous system starting to decompress. And then coming into your body, and I want you to notice the way you feel lying here on the ground. Like you were a scientist taking measurements, taking notes, and observing the curves of your spine. Where your spine comes into contact with the ground, where your spine lifts away from the ground. Notice how much of your body feels in contact and how much feels lifted. 
Notice any details, any sensations that you can pick up right now. Are you comfortable? Are you uncomfortable? How do your shoulders feel? How do your hips feel? Your legs? Is there a sense of equanimity in the body? You feel even from the right side to your left side. Notice the back of the neck, the back of the head, the arms, the legs, the breath. We're going to come back to this pose over and over and over again, just so that you can feel once more the effects of what we're doing, the effects and the benefits of the work. So now, if you prefer having your knees bent, you may bend your knees and take your feet to the ground. And we're going to start with the first massage, which is bringing the two tennis balls right up to the very top of the neck, into this octopus area. And when we're working with the tennis balls, one thing to be mindful of is that we're never on the spine. We're either side of the spine. You can be close to it, but never directly on it. So you're going to take both the tennis balls right up to the very top of the neck, right where your neck starts to form into the skull. And I find that you have to hold these tennis balls here. So you can at home put these in a sock or bind them up with tape, but here, because they're loose, you might just have to hold them. So let your arms come behind your head like you're just lounging in the sun. Again, those knees can be bent to help the back release. And just allow the weight of your head to rest onto those tennis balls. And allow your elbows to relax as well. So the elbows are just resting on the ground. It should feel like a nice cozy pose. So once we get into the pose, we'll call it the pose, allow your body to really sink. So this is the first step to allow the body to relax. And you might feel that there's a lot of tenderness. You might not feel anything at all just yet. Take a couple of breaths, just allowing the body weight to sing into the tennis ball. Then you can start to add movement. So the movements are going to be little here because we're on a very little surface area of the body. But maybe you're starting to move your head up and down, rolling the neck over those tennis balls. Noticing how that feels. Maybe you can move from side to side, so letting the weight shift into one tennis ball, then the other. Or perhaps you start to make little circles, little massaging circles into the neck. Now I guide you into the area, and then I just allow you to explore. You're looking for tenderness. You're looking for parts that are feeling stiff, feeling achy, and you're moving into them. And then moving intuitively, you're going to notice what you need. You need to pause and hold, let the body relax, let the body release the tension and the gripping it's doing. Or do you need to massage up and down, side to side, little circles? So we'll all end up doing slightly different things as we'll need different things in our bodies. Then you can explore more of your neck. You can stay up by the skull, sometimes even tipping the chin up to the sky, or you can massage more down the neck. Staying more in the upper half though, as we'll start to get into the bottom half and the shoulders in a bit. What does it feel like if you perhaps turn the head from side to side? Releasing and massaging into the neck. So in this way, we're getting really intimate with the body. We're really starting to know how we feel. It's very surprising how little we actually know how the body feels until we start to poke and prod it. Then we start to realize that, oh, that was a bit tight. Well, that's feeling a bit tender. And the better we know our bodies, the better and the earlier we can pick up signs. We can hear little warning signs. And we can better tend to the body. So 
just another moment here. And then we're going to take the tennis balls away and then come back to that reset position. So the legs are going to extend again, the arms are going to rest by your side. You're going to notice the way you feel. And as we start to work down the body, you may notice that the body works all together. It's like a chain. There's a chain reaction happening. So as we release the neck, maybe you might even notice that all the way down into your feet, into your legs, into your hips, into your shoulders. Just notice what you feel. Then we're going to move down to the tops of the shoulders and to the trapezius muscle. So you're going to move and bring your tennis balls right about here. So you're going to have to maybe put one at a time underneath. Take a moment just to sink and to hold. So you're going to let the weight of your body rest into the tennis ball. And the arms can just rest down by your side. And maybe having those knees bent. I prefer having my knees bent feet to the floor. It just allows me to steer my body a little bit more as I start to move, rock and roll. And maybe you even have to push into your feet to lean more of the body weight into the tennis ball. And then start to move, start to explore, start to massage. And if you're not getting enough sensation, with both the tennis balls, you can just work with one side at a time. So notice how that feels. You can manually take the tennis balls a little bit wider. Maybe a little bit more narrow. So you're exploring and you're searching. You're searching for the tender parts. They're right up at the very kind of top of the shoulders and neck. And our bodies are going to feel different every time we do this. So don't expect to find the same results because it just depends on what you've been doing with your body. Go into the deep breath. So if you do find any areas that are particularly tender, make sure you're breathing nice and deeply. Low and slow. Keep the breath low into your belly. Keep the breath slow and full. Our breath is such a great natural way of reducing pain and discomfort in our bodies. Hence why they teach it to women when they give child birth. Breathing nice and deeply. Exhaling out the discomfort, allowing the body to relax. So you could be moving up and down, side to side, round and round. You could just be letting the body weight sink into the tennis ball. I'm going to take just another moment here. And then we're going to release and relax that. So we're going to take the tennis balls away, come back to lying flat, legs extended, arms by your side, palms up. Just to start to notice again the effect of that now in the body. Maybe you're starting to notice some differences. Again, feeling your whole body. Then we're going to move further down to the space between your shoulder blades into the rhomboid muscle. So you're going to place the tennis ball. You have these nice big scapular shoulder blades in between them. And you're going to start closer to the spine. Remember, never on the spine. And then you're going to start to move a little bit wider and up and down that whole area of the upper back. And this is where it starts to get tender. <laughs> As we work further and further down the body, you'll start to become a little bit more and more audible, making sure that you're breathing nice and deep. Remember, you never want to be on 10 on your pain scale. If you find that this is too unbearable, ease it off with a blanket. So by having your knees bent, you can kind of use your feet to steer your body. And then you get a little bit more movement. And again, you're the explorer. You're searching out those tender bits. You're searching out what needs work. 
What well, needs a little bit of attention today? TLC. Rolling around those shoulder blades. What can you find? And when you find it, don't just go, oh, okay, yep, I found it and move on. Spend some time with it. Spend some time with that challenging part of your body, with the discomfort. Go into it. Breathe deeply into it. Maybe even just stay with it for a moment. Let the body weight rest into it. With every exhale, encouraging it to soften, to release, to let go. Just like a masseuse finds the knot and then works the knot out. They don't just find the knot and move on. They stay there for a little bit until the muscles start to release. Moving mindfully, so we're not all thinking about something else, thinking about what's for dinner. We know what that's, that is, juice. <laughs> we're not thinking about work. We're not thinking about our lovers. We're just here thinking about that muscle that's feeling a bit tender. And trying to find how to release the body a little bit more. Breathing nice and deeply. And if you're hardcore and you want even more, you can reach your hands up to the sky. Good. And with your arms up, maybe rocking from side to side. So that's going to give you a little bit more access. And you can also wrap your arms around your chest like you're giving yourself a big hug. Again, if that's too much now, just ease out of that. Bring the arms back down. And if your arms are wrapped around the chest in a big hug, just switch sides so the other arm is on top. Ooh. <laughs> nice deep breaths. Great. And it's your body to explore. And then we're going to release and relax. So removing the tennis balls, taking yourself flat to the ground again, extending your legs, the arms down by your side. And just notice now the way your body feels. You're probably starting to notice that the body is becoming flatter and flatter to the floor. Yeah. And you may notice that's having an effect not just on that one area, but on the whole body. So it's amazing how one part of the body can affect another part of the body. And why it's so difficult when we have something going on in our bodies because we tend to just focus and target on that specific area when it could be coming from anywhere above or below. So now we're going to bend the knees and we're going to come into more of the lower back, trying to find the QL muscle. So you're going to kind of start here where the bottom ribs are and then work your way down the lower back. We don't want to be on the ribs because it just won't be comfortable and we don't want to put pressure and weight on the ribs. You're kind of finding the soft tissue and the muscles around that. But starting where the ribs almost end and then working down the rim of your pelvis and just exploring that whole area. Remember the four movements, you just stop, hold. And I would suggest that as you begin, just for a couple of breaths, just release the body, get the body to relax. And then you can begin to move up and down, side to side, making circles. And when you find those tender bits, stop and hold. Massaging around. Moving mindfully. Breathing deeply. Mm. 
Remember to work your way down. And once you get past the ribs, you can move a little bit wider. You can kind of sway the hips from side to side. Just exploring what needs massaging, what needs the attention. All our bodies will be different. Just going right down to the kind of top of the pelvis without going down below the pelvis into the glutes just yet. We'll be there next. And then taking another moment here and then we're going to lift the feet, remove the tennis balls, send your legs and just take a moment to pause there. Notice that. Notice your body, noticing the curves of your spine. How much of your body feels in contact with the ground? Coming back into that slow and deep breath. Now we're going to start to work into the glutes, into the buttocks. So from here we're going to bend the knees. And we're going to work the glutes maximus first. Which, uh, we're going to start more at the top of the pelvis. And then work our way around the top of the pelvis area mostly. So taking the tennis balls with the knees bent, again, you're working now below the rim of the pelvis, but staying more around the top of the pelvis. And then just taking a moment to let the tennis ball sink into the body, the body sink into the tennis ball. Relax the body, consciously tell the body to relax to soften. And then start your exploration. Up and down, side to side. Round and round. So you're staying more on the upper half, middle of your buttocks. And those of you who want even more sensation, you can come up so that you're on your feet and your hands, there's a little bit more body weight going into the glutes. And if you want even more, do one glute at a time. So you're really isolating that. But if you don't need more, then there's no point. It doesn't give you extra brownie points. <laughs> it's only if you're struggling to feel that in the muscles. And if you want to explore that. But if it's already hitting, you know, eight and seven on your pain scale, then just stay there. Breathe, relax the body. Working more the upper part of the group. Not forgetting how valuable it is just to stay and hold sometimes. And how valuable taking an audible exhalation is sometimes. Ah. And then we're going to release, we're going to reset and just observe and feel the effect of that in your body. The way the legs fall open, the way the body feels against the ground. Then we're going to work more into the middle of the glutes around the piriformis muscle. So think of the bullseye of your buttocks. You're going to bend the knee, take the tennis ball around the bullseye, the middle of the buttocks. Good. And again, just Taking a moment to let the body weight sink there. And then maybe making little circles side to side, or you're just staying as you are. 
You can even start to take the legs slightly open, so maybe dropping one knee down to the floor and massaging around there. Then the other side, you can do both knees together. By all means, you can keep the knees bent. Sometimes that's enough in itself. You're exploring your body. Go slowly, go mindfully, go attentively. And you find the challenging spots, the sweet spots, even though they don't feel so sweet. <laughs> Stay and then breathe there. That's where the release will happen. Work into that. You can always come back up if you felt that that was giving you more sensation coming up on the forearms or the feet. This is a really good area to work the body. that is almost like a, a real enjoyable sensation. <laughs> it hurts so good. I think there's a song about that. You make me hurt so good. And then we're going to ease off of that, coming back to lie on the back, just noticing how we feel after that. Noticing the effect to the whole body, the legs, the spine, even all the way up to the neck and the shoulders. Slowing down our breath. Remembering to breathe low and slow. Now the next one we're going to do just one at a time, one kind of follow at a time. We're going to work the glute medius, which I will warn you now can be the most tender of all the glutes. It's the side of your buttock. So it's the hip stabilizing muscles. So you can do this lying on your back, starting with one side. You're gonna go more towards the outer part of your buttock. Stay, hold, let the body relax. And then starting to roll towards the outer edge a bit more, and then start to explore that. And you'll feel it. If you want it even more, you could come to your side and massage it that way. So you're on the outer edge of your buttocks, outer side of your buttocks. Oh. <laughs> Was I right? Is it the most tender one? Yeah. Nice deep breaths. And you're allowed to be audible with your breath. You're allowed to sigh. You're allowed to. And if you wanted to go over to the edge even more, we're looking for this muscle we call the pocket muscle, the PFL muscle. So you will kind of roll over a bone for a moment until you find again that little bit of fleshy, soft, pockety area on the side of your hip. That's what we're looking to get into. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's only a little muscle, but yeah, it can get over so tight. that muscle that starts at the top of your IT bend. So if that muscle's tight, then it can affect that IT bend as well. IT bends are difficult to roll out with the tennis ball, I find better with the foam roller, but you're very welcome to try it to roll out the outer edge of your leg and thigh. Mm 
you might be happy with what you've cut so far. And then bring to breathe nice and deeply. And then swap over to the other side. Actually, before we swap to the other side, let's just take a moment just to notice if we can feel any difference from doing one side to the other. And you may even notice, if you even look at your feet, sometimes in some of our bodies, even some one of our foot might fall open a little bit more than the other. Not That doesn't happen to everyone, but sometimes my body definitely happens. And then we're going to start again on the other side, bending the knees, finding the outermost part of that buttock. And then starting to massage there. And you may quickly notice that your body is not symmetrical <laughs> in the way we feel. So you might have one side that was okay, one side that was a lot stronger, more tender. Remember your breath. We tend to go into holding our breath when things get difficult, when things get challenging, but instead the opposite is more helpful, breathing nice and deeply. Letting the breath go rather than holding on to the breath. And just that intention that we're not punishing the body <laughs> for being tight. We're soothing it. We're nurturing it. Remembering you can go up to that little pocket muscles. If you're wearing jeans, shorts, where your pocket would be. There's a little muscle in there trying to find the soft tissue rather than the bone. Another moment there. And then we're going to come on to our backs again. <sighs> Just to feel, to appreciate that relief. To feel the effect on our whole body. Tend to slow down and deepen the breath. And we're going to flip over onto our bellies. And when we flip over onto our bellies, the first thing we're going to do is the hip flexors. So you're going to bring your tennis balls below your hip points into this little dip here to try to work into the hip flexors. <laughs> How could you fall asleep during that? <laughs> You must be, you must need that sleep. <laughs> so we're going to start to massage the hip flexors. You can then as well start to massage more down the front of your thighs and quads. If you can get there, you can just stay and hold. You can massage up and down. And you can play with perhaps just staying low to the ground or coming up like you were in a sphinx with the elbows underneath the shoulders. Sometimes it feels nice to have the tennis balls there and coming all the way up into a cobra or an upward facing dog. 
using your toes to steer you. You can just all options. You are a body to explore. And you'll feel those rope-like muscles passing from your hips to the legs. You can just roll over that muscles and tendons. going down to the quadriceps. <laughs> I find it very surprising that in the West they often don't massage the quadriceps. I remember I was in India when I first got my quadriceps massage. Boy, let me tell you, <laughs> you do start to tear up a little bit and laugh at the same time. It's very strange. So maybe you're feeling like that now. <laughs> body 
kind of like acupuncture and pressure looks at the meridians, same kind of thing, the energy lines. And the hub of the energy lines, they all intersect in the belly. So it's actually a powerful place energetically, and I'm not sure if it's the same in acupuncture as I'm not um, from that lineage, but a lot of our energy lines cross through our belly. So you can massage just the abdomen and then affect all of those energy lines or meridians essentially, just by massaging the belly. You can go slightly wider, making sure you're not coming through ribs. And also we are always tensing our abdominal muscles. The muscles of our abdomen get so tense. And I know we want a six pack and I know that's the ideal. But if your stomach muscles are always too tense and too hard, that can affect your lower back. You can start to have a tight lower back. It will affect your digestion because the belly is unable to, it's always tense and it's not able to contract and relax as it should. And we know that we hold a lot of emotion, a lot of our emotions are felt in our gut. So by massaging those tummy muscles, getting them to relax and to release can have a big effect on our whole well-being holistically. So just take another moment there. You can try coming up a little higher. And then when you're ready to release that, if you haven't done already, just come out of that, lie on your belly, and just notice the way that makes you feel. Notice the effect of that in your body. And then from there, we're going to use our hands, come all the way back up. Now we're going to come to our seat. We're just going to do a couple of things seated before we end with the lower legs and the feet. So, to get into the chest and the shoulders, I find it's better to do this with your hand. Now you can do all these things against the wall as well, but we don't have a wall, so we are doing them like this. So just taking one tennis ball, and it's like we're all about to have a shower together. Like you're washing yourself with soap, you're going to roll the tennis ball around the chest. Another area, I'm going to go on about this, I guess neglected by Western massage. Sorry if you do massage and you do all these areas, but typically in a normal massage you wouldn't get that. Particularly if you're a woman and it's so nice. Does anyone else feel really sore around there? Mm. Their pecs? Yeah. So just giving a little massage. And you'll know how low you can go, it just depends on what's, what you've got. Releasing the pectoral muscles. There's also energy lines that run through the center of the chest, down through the center of the chest bone. This is where someone's going to watch the video and be like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> And then it's nice to kind of circle around the, the head, the ball of your shoulder. And I even like to lift the arm up and then get into, not the armpit itself, but just kind of below the armpit, more towards the outside, the serratus anterior muscles. So you're kind of going along the outside and down. where it looks like we're all taking a shower. <laughs> you feel that muscle there? I guess it depends on what you've been doing, if you'll feel it. But there's a lovely muscle, serratus anterior, that feels good when it's tight to get into the massage. You can even massage up into the arm a little bit. 
you've got these beautiful muscles in the back that actually attach right up into the armpit, into the arm, your, your lap. They're like big fat wings. You can start to get into those a little bit there. And then all the way around, back up to the top of the shoulder, then you can start to get that trapezius muscle, that big hump of a muscle. Oh yeah. <laughs> Rolling around that. Amazing what you can do with a tennis ball, isn't it? <laughs> and if you take that arm and that same arm and wrap it around the back, sometimes that allows you to get a little bit more stretch. Get into that muscle a little bit more. And then you can drop your ear to the opposite shoulder and then start to massage into the side of the neck. Swap hands if that's easier. Right all the way up into the skull, right all the way up into the head behind the ear. And you're just noticing your body, so you're searching, you're being curious. What's feeling tender? What can I massage? What needs a massage? And then you can either stay on that side for a bit longer or start to roll over to the other side. Beginning to lift that arm and see if you can massage down the side. It's more like the outside line. If you drew a straight line down, you can come on the back a little bit more. And again, you're just exploring to see what you need. If there's no tenderness there, then you can just move on and go up to the trapezius. If you're feeling something there, you can stay and explore. We don't have awareness to how tender our bodies actually are. You know, we kind of walk around and we're carrying all this with us and we don't even realize how many muscles are stiff, how much lactic acid there is in the body. So you start to realize in this practice how powerful massage actually is when you get a good massage. The difference between being tickled and rubbed and put oil over your body than there is actually getting into muscles and getting deep into all those adhesions and tight spots. But what of effect you could feel how the body was just flattening out as you went along. I highly, highly suggest a massage. Once a week, doctor's orders. <laughs> <laughs> one cough muscle at a time. You're going to place the tennis ball underneath the cough 
Opposite knee is bent, foot to the floor, and then you're just going to push down and roll. So you can go right down the middle, or you can start to turn your foot slightly out, get to the side. Turn the foot in, or the inside, whatever you need. Remember, you can just stay, drop, and hold, breathing into that. different sensations. Those of you are really hardcore, you can take the opposite leg to sink down into that tender spot. A little bit more weight? No. <laughs> For those of you who suffer with plantar fasciitis, that tightness of the bottom of your feet is a really good one to do. Muscles. Again, stretching is wonderful. Obviously, a big advocate of stretching. <laughs> Sometimes the massaging is also just as important and beneficial. the hamstrings. You, we can do it on the platform, but it's best to do it on a chair because then your leg can hang over the side and you can get enough pressure and weight. You can try here on the platform, but it's really hard to get enough pressure onto the hamstrings, I find, unless your hamstrings are really tight. But if you want to try after the class, I think we'll run out of time. You can just sit on the edge of the platform, place the tennis balls underneath the back of the thigh, and roll around the hamstring. done with that, we're going to come up to standing. So we're going to do an odd thing. We're going to finish our class standing. Usually we finish lying down, start standing. But before we um, come into this, I just want us to feel Tadasana. So the feet are hip distance apart. There's no tennis balls yet underneath the feet. And just notice the way your body feels. Notice your posture. Notice your stance of your shoulders, your head, your spine. And even that may have changed from doing this practice. You might notice that that has already started to shift. And then bringing your attention into your feet and just notice where the weight lies. Notice the arches of your feet. Notice how alive the feet feel. How balanced you feel. How grounded you feel. Making a mental note of that. And then massage one of your feet. So take the tennis ball under. And just start to roll the tennis ball around the bottom of your feet. Full foot. And it might be very tender. <laughs> it might not be. But even try to get all the way up to your toes. To really activate all the way up. inner arches, the outer arches. Add as much or as little pressure as you need. 
and watch your toes. Watch your toes as you massage. Watch how they open. Watch how the foot spreads. So by affecting the bottom of your foot, you're virtually affecting the top of your foot as well. And you're creating space between the tendons. And then take that foot to the ground, close your eyes, and feel again that right foot compared to your left foot. Notice which side feels more stable, more grounded. Wider, more narrow. If your life depended on balancing on one leg right now, which leg would you try to balance on? Which leg feels more alive, more ready and alert? I'm assuming it's the one with the soul. <laughs> so a lot of people who are really into their yoga practice will start off by rolling their feet. It will really help them to grasp. Not just physically, but also energetically, but it will help as well with their balancing in their postures. So you're very welcome to roll your feet before the start of class. And you get here early. Come into the other side. down to your feet. And then let's just finish with a big inhale. Just take your arms up and overhead. Bring the hands together. And then a big exhale as you bring your hands to your heart. And just give your bodies a big bow. Big difference.